The gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Bacon, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I agree with the comments of many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle expressing grave concern over the President's decision to establish a date certain for the withdrawal of all U.S. military forces from Afghanistan. I believe this decision is deeply misguided and is damaging to the long-term national security interests of the United States and our allies. The straw man argument of ending forever wars might be a convenient campaign slogan, but it is strategically naive and deeply offensive to those who have volunteered to fight to ensure that the very organization which attacked us on September 11th, 2001, is incapable of ever doing it again. This is their job. It's a job that I did on four deployments. And it's our sworn duty. It's their sworn duty. They are proud to do it, and we honor them for it. The truth is, our force levels in Afghanistan are a fraction of what they once were and have been steadily decreasing for years. Maintaining a small residual force is not an unaffordable or unsustainable burden. More than any other deployment in the world, the U.S. and NATO presence in Afghanistan delivers tangible strategic benefits to the U.S. at a relatively small and ever-decreasing cost. Not to mention the immense humanitarian benefit to the people of Afghanistan itself, especially the women and the girls. The recent violence committed by the armed forces in Afghanistan only proves that the Taliban, the Al-Qaeda, ISIS-K, clearly see this announcement as a full-fledged capitulation and reveals their true nature as untrustworthy and savage. A military withdrawal must always be based on conditions, not a calendar. By, by establishing a specific date, we're simply surrendering the hard-fought leverage we've gained over two decades and are inviting the Taliban to embark on a vicious reign of terror against the Afghanistan people. Furthermore, as a military man, I'm utterly dismayed that we did not take the necessary steps to secure and prepare standoff basing in the region to protect power when needed to conduct counterterrorism operations and to support the Afghan national defense and security forces before announcing the withdrawal. We put the cart before the horse. We now have a moral obligation to ensure that the Afghan, Afghan security forces can continue functioning with the proper military and financial support to keep the Taliban from once again plunging Afghanistan into darkness. Finally, and most urgently, we must honor our promises and keep faith with our partners and allies. Our values must remain the foundation of our foreign policy. If our partners and allies lose faith in our ability to back them up, we willingly cede the field to an enemy who seeks our destruction. It is now, unfortunately, a moral imperative to find a way to expedite the safe passage of the very people that stood by us for nearly two decades. They have been loyal to our shared mission and sacrificed so much to the pursuit of democracy. Their safety must, not, must be an absolute priority for this administration. So far, we have not observed sufficient, sufficient urgency in developing an interagency plan to do this and in requesting the necessary resources and authorities from Congress. If we don't do this, the Af Afghans who helped our military will be hunted down and murdered by the Taliban. We must ask ourselves, do we learn anything from our clumsy withdrawal from Iraq in 2011? The only thing more expensive than maintaining a moderate level of stability in the country like Afghanistan is the bloodshed and cost we will bear if we are forced to return. And this is not an academic hypothetical consideration, nor is it a partisan issue. Like many others on this side of the aisle, I repeatedly and publicly expressed my deep concerns over President Trump's impulse for a hasty withdrawal. The Taliban is still allied with Al Qaeda. If the Taliban prevails after our withdrawal, it is very likely that Al Qaeda will once again have a safe haven to conduct terrorism. And this is the very reason we invaded Afghanistan in the first place. Fortunately, pushback from Congress in the previous administration slowed the withdrawal process while retaining negotiating leverage and key counterterrorism capabilities. Unfortunately, from my vantage point, this latest decision has abandoned any semblance of strategy. It is a retreat. This hasty withdrawal is a tragic mis mistake, and we're going to regret it. I urge the president to change course before it's too late. Madam Speaker, I yield back.